In the hot plains of the Punjab in northern India lies Ambala, once a famous cavalry station, now the headquarters of the Indian Air Force. Only armed unit of the Crown, entirely officered by Indians, head of whom is squadron leader S. Mukherjee, the Indian Air Force was founded in 1933. But a year or so earlier, the best of hundreds of keen young men who offered their services were sent to Cranwell in England, one of the finest air training academies in the world. And how well they acquitted themselves can be judged from the formation flight which is about to set off into the skies. helping to strap him in. The squadron consists of 12 planes divided into three flights of four machines each. Yes, I know you can only see three, but our cameraman hasn't yet grown wings and had to sit in the fourth. The V-shaped formation ahead is called a VIC. The straight and narrow down there is nine abreast, and the French word for a ladder, echelon, is used for this one. These formations are the Air Force's equivalent to the Army's drill, drilled on at a mile and a half a minute, which enables the pilots to gain perfect control of their machine. Kit is inspected daily by the airmen on duty, and in wartime, gas masks form a prominent part of it. Comfort in the IAF barracks is well looked after, the canteen being particularly popular. While next door is the airman's mess in which meals are served on property bearing the royal cipher. Corporals and other senior NCOs have well furnished rooms of their own for sleep and leisure hours. Hmm, you seem to have struck a rather studious specimen. So we'll leave him and take a glance at the squadron leader's pit, a welfare centre where airmen's wives and children receive modern medical attention from the resident woman doctor. The tiny umbrella at the top of a parachute pulls the main body of it open when the descending pilot is at a safe distance from his machine. If it opened too soon, the parachute would get entangled in a wing strut or propeller. Made of the finest silk, each of these costs over 50 pounds sterling. And I've yet to meet the pilot who didn't think his life worth at least that. And that is how supplies are landed and lives are saved. And to think that all that started from an old woman's umbrella in a high wind. The British Empire has already shown that it knows a thing or two about accurate bombing. And here is an example of how well it is done in India. Watch the bomb leave the plane and smash the target to smithereens. When wireless communication is impossible or undesirable, a large letter M for message is spread out on the ground. The plane swoops down, hooks up the bag with instructions, and zooms off again into the sky. This one may well have gone off to take yet another of the thousands of photographs, which, when joined together, form perfect maps, marking the positions of every building and landmark of importance. Just such photographic maps as the RAF took of Germany in the early days of this war. 
which have since rendered possible their deadly accurate bombing of aerodromes and armament factories. Airplanes are like motor cars. They don't run properly without regular services. And in the Air Force, this is done after every flight. Slow and tedious work, but essential both for safety and for efficiency. A single loose strut might mean a lost life. Tumbling in the gym is a rather faster work. And another popular way of keeping fit is hockey, at which India leads the world. Across the way in the officer's swimming pool, a beauty and, uh, shall I say, the beast, rival each other as smash makers. While the radio affects a crowd to the mess two or three times a day to listen to the news. Officers, one of whom, to my knowledge, has already lost a son in this war. The famous twin-engine Valencia transport bombers are used by officers and men of the Indian Air Force when they move from one station to another. These aerial troop trains form a fast and convenient means of getting about. On their return journey, they take personnel from Ambala sent to relieve the recent arrival. Every ounce, men and baggage, being weighed before it is allowed on board. Au revoir, chaps. Meanwhile, the squadron leader takes up a blenheim. I have no need to tell you anything about these planes. They, with spitfires and hurricanes, are in the news every day in their fight for democracy across the sea. They are fast indeed, taking off at 120 miles an hour, and cruising at over four miles a minute. It is fighters like these that the rapidly growing Indian Air Force needs. They look beautiful, but Germany has discovered what deadliness lies behind their sleek and lovely lines. It is for fighters that money is required today. Fighters for the eager young men who are being trained in their hundreds to fly in this country's defense. This is how the RAF brought down Heinkels and Messerschmitts in Norway and Belgium and France. Mental photographs of a dogfight in the air, lent to us by Universal News. And this is the sort of welcome the Indian Air Force will give any invader of our shores. But more planes and yet more planes are needed. That is up to you, men and women of India. have already volunteered to officer and man the Indian Air Force, if it need be to fight as gallantly as these of the RAF. Filmed by British Movertone News as they defend the convoy of ships attacked by Nazi planes. Many such squadrons are needed now for the defense of India. But that, I repeat, lies wholly in your hands. Cooperation with the Army is daily work for the Air Force. And the AILO, short for Army Intelligence Liaison Officer, explains to officers of a flight what information is required about enemy gun batteries operating over the distant frontier hills.
have seen something of the life and methods, the practice flights and invaluable photographic work of only a single flight of the Indian Air Force. Many more there are, and the IAF grows stronger every month. But when we shot this film, they were scattered to guard India's coastline and to keep a watchful eye on the turbulent frontier. Our thanks are due to the commanding officer and the officers and airmen of number one squadron, whose enthusiastic cooperation made this film possible despite heat and dust. We who made it dedicate this brief pictorial record to the rapid increase of the Indian Air Force so that all may go to sleep, assured that as night falls and hangar doors close, the plains of Hindustan will so grow in numbers as to cast a protective shadow over the whole of this vast land and serve as an invincible bulwark in the defense of India. <laughs>